here we're going to go through another example. Now, in this example, the universe consists of all integers and the open statements rx, sx, rs are as defined. rx is 2x plus 1 equals 5 and sx is x squared equals 9. Now, moving on to the next page, you can see that I copied our open statements here. Now, what I want to get at, at the, in this example is that if we try to find the validity of this statement that there is some x where rx and sx is true, well, this statement is actually false. There isn't an integer a that could satisfy both equations uh, rx and sx. So uh, what we have here is that uh, there exists some x where rx and sx that is a false statement but if we if we uh, expanded this statement such that there exists in rx and there exists in xx well this equation is true we can use two integers a and b to satisfy this equation so if you tried a equals 2 or b equals 3 or negative 3 then you'd get then you get the truth of this statement so there's a difference between these two statements for the first statements uh, there exists an x such that uh, rx and sx, so these two statements, this and, is true. But as we know, there isn't an x that makes the statement true. But if you if you expanded it, uh, we got a true statement because we could use uh, one variable for rx and another variable for sx. Where in the first one, we have we we we're just we could just a uh, we could use only one variable for both rx and sx. So there's the difference. The existential quantifier ex does not distribute over the logical connective uh, and. So what we have here is uh, ex, rx, and sx. Well, that is not logically equivalent to ex, rx, and ex, sx. Similarly, ex, rx, and S ex, sx does not logically imply ex, rx, and, uh, and sx. So that's the rule here, and um, it's kind of intuitive in a way that if, if, these, if these two statements were logically equivalent, then if this was true, then that must be true as well, right? But that isn't the case here. We found out that this statement would be false for an integer and this statement would be true for two integers. So um, this pretty much proves the point here that the existential quantifier ex does not distribute over the logical connective and. So the statement ex rx and ex sx implies ex rx and sx is not a tautology. Moving on, uh, if, however, a general argument for an arbitrary open statement px, qx, and any arbitrary prescribed universe were given, then the hypothesis ex, px, and qx implies ex, px, and ex, qx is true. So what I mean here is that, going back to this example, why this didn't work is because of our universe. Given our restriction to that specific universe of integers, these two statements cannot be true. And this statement ultimately is not a tautology. But perhaps in some cases where we are just given an arbitrary open statement, so px, qx does not equal or, well, we were using rx, sx, but yeah, just given some open statement, some random statement for px, qx, and, that, and some random prescribed universe, then this hypothesis, uh, ex, px, and qx implies ex, px, and ex, qx might be true. So it might be possible for this ex to distribute into the px and qx, but that really just depends on the universe. So there, in this case, there is at least one element C in the universe for which P, C, and Q, C is true in any prescribed universe. So by the rule of conjunctive simplification, P, C, and Q, C implies P, C, and that is true. Since 
EXPX and EXQX is true whenever EXPX and QX is true, it follows that EXPX and QX logically implies EXPX and EXQX. So that's all I wanted to go through in this video. Uh, I guess the points to keep in this uh, in this video or in this lesson is that um, this does not logically or EXRX and SX is not logical equivalent to EXRX and EXSX. That is because our universe here is uh, our integers. So really uh, the validity of these statements are all dependent on your universe. If our universe was different, then who knows, it might be possible. But in this case, it's not. If we used an arbitrary uh, universe, then this logical equivalence might have worked out, but um, we used integers and it didn't work out. So I guess the main points to keep in this video is to be aware of the universes that you're using and using that universe you would be able to validate the validity of any statements that you're given and um, correspondingly any uh, implications or biconditionals that you are given so that's the process you should follow and uh, it pretty much always works out so that's it for this video thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye